First, I want to thank you all for watching my NFL video each week. I am truly grateful that you are spending some of your valuable time with me. I work super hard to provide the best betting content to you, and without you, this show would not exist. I am going to share four NFL picks for week 7, and I am also going to introduce many new elements. I am really excited to present them to you. First, there will be a ticker at the bottom of your screen that will present some betting information regarding each game. You can view that as food for thought, and hopefully it will help you in your decision-making process when it comes to betting the NFL games. Secondly, each pick presented in my YouTube videos will be assigned a star rating. I was a bit reluctant to go back to star ratings because many viewers misunderstood them in the past and bashed me in the comments because they did not understand their true meaning. I'll do my best to clarify, and I am crossing my fingers that you will appreciate them. In short, each pick will get a rating out of 5 stars. People are used to hotel ratings, where 1 star means the place is junk. That's not the case here. All potential picks that are not in my top 10 are viewed as having 0 star. They are not profitable in my opinion, and I won't talk about them either. Now, all the picks that I am sharing with you are worth betting. This means a pick receiving a rating of 1 star is not crappy. Based on my numbers, it still has a positive expected return on investment, albeit a small one. So again, 1 star does not mean the pick is bad. Viewers in the past used to make comments like, Why are you giving us picks that you think are trash? You are wasting my time. End of quote. If I'm describing a pick with you on YouTube, it means I truly like it. That's the key element to remember here, alright? The star rating will also automatically correspond to some specific staking advice. Here are the details. 5 stars equals an awesome bet, and I recommend betting 4% of your bankroll. 4 stars equals a great bet where I recommend 3% of your bankroll. Up next, a 3-star play, which will be viewed as a good bet. In that case, I suggest betting 2% of your bankroll. Then we have 2 stars, which will be called a decent bet. In that case, bet 1% of your bankroll. And finally, 1 star called slightly profitable bet, where I recommend staking 0.5% of your bankroll. Final piece of information. Each week thus far in the 2024 campaign, I would determine my top 10 picks and I would present my 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th most confident plays with you on this platform. The top 6 were available for savvy sports investors who signed up for them. From now on, I will continue to present 4 picks, but they could be of any rank. It will vary each week. With these explanations out of the way, and I hope you will be happy with these new changes, are you ready to rock with some Week 7 NFL picks? Let's go! Best bet number 10 in week 7 goes to the Houston Texans, plus 3 points at Lambeau Field. This pick is rated 1 star, which means it is a slightly profitable bet, where I suggest risking just 0.5% of your bankroll. Do I feel great about this bet? My level of confidence is not that high, but I'm willing to take a small stab at it. One reason I'm not overly excited about this bet is because outside of their easy win over the Patriots last week, the Texans won all of their prior games by a margin of 6 points or less. They have not been dominant, but I've been surprised by the quality of their defense. Joe Mixon has looked swift and powerful, 
He was a strong acquisition by the Texans during the offseason. Unfortunately, he has been hampered by injuries this year, but he's looked extremely good when he was on the field. Jordan Love looked rusty when he returned from a knee injury. However, he's been taking a lead in each game and it culminated with four TD passes against Arizona last week. Christian Watson and Romeo Dodds are back on the field and it has helped Green Bay's signal caller. In short, both offenses are very good, but I'm taking Houston mainly due to their defense. They have allowed more points than the Packers, but they rank third in yards allowed per game versus the 18th place for Green Bay. I can see a back and forth game that will be tight until the end of the game. In that case, I prefer to side with the three-point underdog, Houston. My ninth most confident play goes to the Las Vegas Raiders as seven-point underdogs. They will be on the road against the Rams, and once again we have a one-star play whose staking advice is the same as the preceding pick. Since the typical point spread across several sports books is 6.5, I am advising to buy half a point in case Vegas loses by 7 points, which is a key number in football. Don't you feel like this line is inflated? The Rams only 1-4 record. Their defense ranks among the bottom 10 in almost all categories. They don't have a home field advantage even when they play at SoFi Stadium and their offensive line is depleted. And yet, you are asking them to win a ball game by a margin of 8 points or more? Sure, they are squaring off against the Raiders, who are a mess right now. They have just traded one of their best players, Davante Adams. The Rams are better rested since they are coming off their bye week, and they will be at home for the third consecutive week. Still, I cannot wrap my head around Los Angeles being a 7-point favorite. Despite the departure of Adams, Vegas still has some solid players in its roster. Max Crosby can disrupt the whole offense with his incredible energy. Jacoby Myers and rookie Brock Bowers have proven to be reliable targets. In short, the Rams may win, but I find it unlikely that they will blow out the Raiders. Are you ready to make a bet at nice odds that can vary between plus 110 and plus 135 right now, which is the same as 2.10 to 2.35 in decimal format? Let me reveal this underdog bet right away. Best bet number seven, rated two stars, which means I recommend betting 1% of your bankroll is the New York Giants team total to go over 20 and a half points. In other words, I think New York's offense will put at least 21 points on the board. I have been surprised at how well the offense has done after losing its number one playmaker by a wide margin, standout rookie Malik Neighbors. In Seattle, they scored 29 points while totaling 420 yards. Last week, on the surface, it looks like the offense sputtered. They only put 7 points on the board against the Bengals. However, if you watch the game, you know they were able to move the ball relatively well. They still obtained 329 total yards, but they just failed to make the big plays when needed. Whether neighbors will be on the field Sunday or not remains to be seen. However, he was expected to be a full participant at Thursday's practice, and he appears on track to face the Eagles. Daniel Jones owns a dreadful 1-14 record in primetime games. The good news is, this game is not in a primetime slot. Philly's defense is not that great. They rank 25th in terms of yards per carry average allowed. As far as their pass defense is concerned, I like to look at the passer rating allowed. In that category, they own the 20th spot, which again is below average. We're going to move up the board by unveiling my third favorite NFL bet of the week. This one was awarded a 4-star rating which means I am betting 3% of my bankroll on it. 
Here it goes. I am taking the 49ers money line as they take on the Chiefs on Sunday afternoon. The only aspect that I don't like about this play is the rest factor, favoring in the Reeds squad. Indeed, the Chiefs are coming off their bye week, so they are getting 7 extra days to game plan and heal injuries. However, the Niners played last Thursday, so they also benefit from some extra rest, albeit a smaller number of days. San Francisco needs to win this game a lot more than KC. The Niners own a disappointing 3-3 record and are at risk of missing the playoffs if they continue like this. Meanwhile, the Chiefs are cruising with a perfect 5-0 record, with not that much competition within their division. They won't feel the urge of winning as much as Niners players. Obviously, we also get the revenge factor on our side. The Chiefs defeated the 49ers by a 25-22 score in overtime when Michael Hardman caught a 3-yard pass with 3 seconds remaining in the overtime period in the Super Bowl. Kyle Shannon's club will be looking to avenge this painful loss. I also liked San Francisco's performance a lot last week. They look like the good old 49ers that we have observed in recent years. The offense was clicking with 483 total yards. Their defense pressured Geno Smith very often, despite ending the game with just one sack. They still disrupted his timing on several occasions. The Chiefs did a very solid job in their first game without Pacheco and Rashi Rice. I was surprised by how well they moved the ball despite their suspect wide receiver group. But at some point, that will catch up to them, right? Xavier Worthy, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Justin Watson are clearly a below-average group. So, in the end, I am strongly confident about San Francisco taking this game. They will hand KC their first loss of the season. Would you like to gain access to my other six picks, including the top two, who received four and five star ratings? As always, you are invited to grab my picks on size and totals for a $49 investment. If the top six plays generate a losing record, you get your money back. Some of you asked if I could offer a monthly package instead of having to get the package every single week. You have asked and I have listened. I have set up a gold package where you will obtain my top 10 picks for weeks 7, 8, 9, and 10. And the best news of all is you are getting a 35% discount compared to a person who buys every week. And I will send you personally some of the picks earlier in the week, so you won't have to wait until Thursday like everybody else. The links to those packages can be found below. So again, you have two options to grow your bankroll with us. The top 10 best NFL bets for week 7 only, or the top 10 best NFL bets for weeks 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's up to you, my friend, and I'll be happy to help you beat your bookies.